Now we're going to look at several ways you can remove objects from your shots if there was something that appeared in the frame by accident. So you can use these methods to try and fix any mistakes or problems without distracting your audience. So I'm going to carry on using Acropolis wall, so I'm just going to drag that down to our timeline. Now let's just say we want to try and remove this little black shadow of a brick on the wall there. It appears in the whole shot and it's pretty noticeable, so let's, let's see if we can try and remove that. So the first method I'm going to show you is content aware fill. So to begin this, I'm just gonna have my clip selected. In fact, I'm going to zoom in just so that we can see the mark pretty clearly. Now I'm gonna grab my pen tool and I'm just gonna draw a mask around this mark on the wall. Okay, so by default, it always goes to add. I'm just gonna change that to none. Now I'm going to right click and hit the track mask button. And as I've said before, the track mask doesn't always work, but in this case, it's doing a pretty good job of tracking the mark on the wall. All right, so there we go. So now I'm going to change this mask to subtract, and you can now see we've just got this little transparent hole where the mark was. Now I'm going to click on my layer, and I'm just going to come over, close this tracker panel, and open this one called Content Aware Fill. So I'm going to change this one saying Alpha Expansion. I just want to increase this a little bit. I'm going to try 10 just to get a bit more of a cleaner edge, and I'm going to change this fill method to Surface. And now I'm going to click Generate Fill Layer. And now After Effects is going to try and use its artificial intelligence to try and come up with something to fill the gap based on what it can see around it. So this is very clever, but depending on the shot, it doesn't always get this right, so we'll see how it does. So we've got a little percentage bar filling up under Generate Fill Layer, and then once that's filled up, it says it is rendering. So when it's finished, you can see that it's created this other layer, which if I just switch off the layer underneath, you can see that this is what it's created. It's created this little artificial area of brickwork to try and match the wall. And if I switch the layer back on and play it through, it has actually done a pretty good job of removing that mark. Like if you didn't know it was there, you probably wouldn't be noticing. I think the bricks it's added look a little bit less blurry than the rest of the shot, but apart from that, it's very, very good. So for certain types of shots, if the object you want to remove is pretty obvious and the background around it is pretty plain, that is one way to do it. So let's say we want to remove the same mark, but content aware fill isn't working. Well, for this method, the first thing you can try is to duplicate your layer. So control D or command D. So now I'm going to select the top layer and do what I did before. I'm going to mask around the mark on the wall. There it is. Once again, I'm going to right click and go to track mask. This time I'm just going to try and select position instead of position scale and rotation. And I'm gonna analyze forward once again. Right, so now it's done that. If we turn off our layer at the back, we can see that that's tracked it pretty well. And I'm gonna leave this mask set to add this time. So what we're gonna try and do this time is use part of the wall next to the mark to replace the part that has the mark on it, but we're gonna use it in the shape of this mask. So to do that, I'm now going to right click on this top layer and come down to pre-compose, and I'm gonna leave this top one ticked, leave all attributes, gonna click okay. This now creates a pre-composition as this top layer, which is kind of like a composition within a composition, composition inception. So the pre-comp still has our mask applied. The mask is still inside. If I turn off the back layer, you can still see it there. But if we now double click on our pre-comp to open it, we can now shuffle the clip inside slightly. So if I just move it over slightly by position, uh, something like that. So we're now gonna be seeing a little bit of this wall where we were seeing this bit, but let's just see if it works. So now I'm gonna close that pre-comp, gonna come back to my original sequence, and there we go. We're now seeing a pasted part of the wall from just slightly further over. Now this might not quite work, so there we go. It's taken this little bit. In fact, you can kind of see the bricks are kind of similar there. It's taken it. I mean, if you weren't looking for it, you probably wouldn't notice, but the further you shuffle it, the more obvious it is. I mean, it kind of looks like you're seeing another wall through a hole of the first wall, but depending on the shot, if you don't shuffle it very far, you might be able to get a good result using this technique. Let's try the other way. So I'm just gonna shuffle it the other way a little bit. And yeah, there we go. So now it's taken this part right here with these darker bricks and you can see that it's tried to paste it there, but that could be another method depending on the shot. But the further you move the position, the more obvious it will be. If I moved it really far and then we go back, you'll see that it's starting to, well, for one thing, it's not selected the right part, but also the move is now really, really obvious. So if you're using this method, just try and take a bit that's really close to the thing you're trying to remove and it might look a bit better.
My third method for removing an object, if the object itself doesn't move and it stays fairly still, would be to save a freeze frame, edit that somewhere else like Photoshop, and then replace it in the image and track it. Now obviously if there's a lot of camera movement and angles are changing, this method probably wouldn't work as well, but if it was a fairly simple shot this could be a good one to try if you like photo editing. So to save a freeze frame you can just select whatever frame you want and make sure the quality is set on full, and then come up to composition, save frame as, and then file. I would just be saving this as a Photoshop PSD because I would do it in Photoshop, but if you use something else you could change the type to a JPEG or something else. Now I'm just going to save that as a PSD, so I'll just hit render. There we go, it's done it. So you could open this in Photoshop or whatever you're using to edit, and then I would probably come in and erase or clone some texture over that mark. Import that into After Effects and just drop it on top of my footage, and it looks the same apart from the little mark appearing and disappearing. And then I would draw a little mask around it, just leaving enough room to feather it. Something like that. Come down to the mask, maybe feather 25 pixels, something like that. So now that is the only little area that we're seeing. Then I would just switch off that top layer and I would do a motion track on that mark under the wall. So this is exactly the same as the 2D camera tracking lesson. Track motion, I'm just going to grab that mark there, something like that. And I also need rotation and scale, so I'm just going to tick both of them. And I'm just going to look for another place on the wall that's kind of obvious, so maybe that mark there. Just going to drag that bigger. And once again, I'm just going to let it do its thing and analyze forward. And there we go, there is our tracking data, and because it's wobbling around as well, that's why I did rotation and scale as well. Okay, so it's done that, so I'm just going to do new null object. It's going to come back onto that layer now and edit target. going to select null, OK, apply, OK. Just going to switch back on my top layer with the mark removed. That's just the still photo, remember. And I'm just going to switch off the null object, just don't need the red square there. So now we're just going to go back to fit and we're going to see how that worked. And there we go, that is the third method of removing an object. It's done a fairly good job but it is wobbling a little bit, the motion track is just making it wobble slightly and it is not moving in 3D remember, it is a 2D still image and it is a bit blurry because it was the first frame from our sequence where that mark was pretty small in the frame. But those are several methods of trying to remove an object from your frame, so in some shots one will probably work better than the others, you just need to experiment and see what you can come up with. But if you need to remove something from your frame that wasn't meant to be there, those are three methods of doing it.